Before becoming governor, Glenn Youngkin spent 25 years at his dream job at the Carlisle Group, a private equity firm. He prayed each year that if the Lord had something else for him, he'd lead him there. One day during his prayer time, Youngkin says God made it clear he did indeed have something very different in store. I'm forever grateful in him calling out to me and saying, step out of where you're comfortable and go someplace where you're uncomfortable. That place was politics. After a period of time of reflecting and praying, um, in July, I went to Suzanne and said, uh, I'm going to quit my job at Carlisle. And uh, she looked at me and said, uh, have you lost your mind? <laughs> and she said, what are you going to go do? And I said, well, I think I'm going to go run for governor. Once Yunkin felt God's calling, he acted quickly. When he came to me and said, he not only said, I'm going to retire, but he said, I'm going to retire this weekend, um, I was pretty taken aback. Yeah, I, I think she, um, there might have been a tear or two. Um, <laughs> and, we, and we prayed over it right then and there. And, and when you tell um, your forever love that you're going to quit this job tomorrow, um, it's unsettling. And, uh, and it really was a big step for both of us. By January 2021, Youngkin had officially entered the governor's race. He went on to win the GOP primary and eventually the governorship by almost two points, becoming Virginia's first elected Republican governor in 12 years. Were you surprised when you won? I was, um, <laughs> there wasn't a day in the campaign that I wasn't surprised about a lot. Um, <laughs> we didn't know much going into this. And we went into it with, with a, just a, a basic commitment that we were going to run a campaign that, we, that would reflect us and to do it in a way that was consistent with our beliefs and would make those people that had invested their treasure and time with us proud. Throughout the campaign, the Youngkins leaned on their faith. We were able to do it in a way that I think was very representative of what we aspired to do, which is to, which is to give him glory and honor during this and to, and to be a light along the way and, and not to walk away from our faith, but to walk into it and to not be ashamed of the fact that we pray and we look to, we look to the Lord for help every day. And I think that was just incredibly encouraging. As governor, Yunkin says he begins each day asking God for help. My day really does uh, start with Psalm 121, and I lift my eyes up to the hills, and I ask where my help comes from, and I know my help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. There are tough decisions, and, and there's a big difference between trying to find the right path forward and trying to make everybody happy. And I think if you're doing the latter, then we're not doing the job. And the job requires tough decisions. And tough decisions require discernment. And he adds, the Lord continues to reveal himself. I have to say, what he has been showing me is grace. Because uh, I'm reminded every day that there was only one perfect person in the history of this planet, and it certainly was not me. <laughs> and, uh, and he shows me grace every day. Youngkin believes he's been given this platform to help put parents back in control when it comes to what their children learn in schools. One of the big challenges that we saw was the, the fact that parents were being pushed out of their children's lives, um, and oftentimes at the moments where children need them the most. And so uh, we have absolutely stepped into uh, an effort to empower parents and to make sure that their fundamental right to make decisions for their children is not just protected, but uh, is, is uh, enforced. And he offers this advice to other believers who feel called to run for office. Don't worry too much because all things are possible with him. And he calls us to be obedient. He doesn't tell us how it's going to turn out. He just calls us to be obedient. And I felt from the moment that I told Suzanne I'm quitting my job tomorrow, this huge weight come off of me. And I felt encouraged uh, this in every day, every moment. The First Lady says she sees her work with Virginians as a mission field. I have felt um, in my heart that my role could be missional and that if I would approach it that way, if I would approach people with dignity, if I would treat everyone like they were made in the image of God, and if I wouldn't worry so, so much about getting it right, 
but rather just serving um, that hopefully we would do a good job. They're thankful for the Lord's protection over their entire family. I'm just so proud of our kids because they didn't wake up one morning and say, we'd really like for our dad to run for governor and become <laughs> kind of, you know, b b b politically known. And they didn't ask for that. Uh, and they have been fabulous. And so I'm just so proud of them. And grateful for prayers from both friends and those they've never met. I always want to make sure that they understand that we see the manifestation of those prayers yes, every do. day, really every do. single day. And it's extraordinary to, to know that people are praying for you, people who we've never met. While the governor's name is often included on lists of 2024 presidential candidates, he says right now his focus remains on Virginia. The reality is that I have been very focused on the job that I'm doing. And the midterm elections were just a few weeks ago. And, and I think coming out of the midterm elections, I think our biggest challenge right now is to go deliver. Uh, and I think anyone newly elected or those of us elected just one year ago have to stay focused on delivering. Youngkin says his goal as governor is to deliver results for the Virginians who hired him. He also intends to keep working with the state's divided legislature in hopes of passing bills with bipartisan support. Abigail Robertson, CBN News.